You're listening to Darling Shine, a podcast by Elodie Pullen and myself, Chloe Fisher. Darling Shine is your survival kit to the unexpected shit life throws at you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the season finale of Darling Shine. Did you like welcome that? Welcome back. Oh, my God, I can't believe it's the last epi. We might have a bonus one for you guys in the next few weeks, though, Dolphs. Yeah, maybe. We a have little a little Q&A about that. one. Yes, actually, we will do mm. that. Um, Chloe, I just want to say I'm proud of you, Muffin, and I'm proud of me. We've got a million listeners now. <sighs> I, I could have gone and downloaded the podcast a million times, just saying. So I don't know if it's real people or if it's just the I way know, I've it. definitely <laughs> listened to it a few times. I never listened to it. Ever. Well, I feel like whenever I was in LA and I had like big long drives and like I, we, you know, we had we had recorded it and then we, you know, it would go live and then sometimes like, oh, I just want to like kind of re-listen to it from like start mm. to finish on my radio or my in my car. Um, yeah. Um, God. Sometimes when people are like, oh, I just listened to like that particular episode, it was so good or did this happen or that happened and I'm like, oh, what? I can't even remember that. So then I go and listen to it just to like hear it from their point of view or what like their feedback yeah. or something. But um, often I, I just – I don't, I'd love I don't to. Listen. Um, I'd love to do like a bit of a rewind, and maybe while well, I've got another twenty four hours in quarant- home quarantine here, <laughs> um, I might listen to our first episode because I want to see like if any like oh. do we, how the audio sounds because I know we've definitely had some highs and lows with our audio throughout the seasons. <laughs> I would actually hate to go and listen to that episode. <laughs> I reckon it would be shit <laughs> and awkward because we didn't. Not that we're like pros. Net. Well, I'm definitely not a pro. I'm still a bit awkward, <laughs> but um. That that one was that one was so scary. I remember sweating. I was like freaking out. Like I couldn't believe we were doing this. Like, don't you think that here we, we are? We um, you look at like other people that do podcasts, and it is so profesh. Like they're sitting in like a recording mm. studio with like their mics and they're facing each other, and ours is just like the shit version in it. Yeah, in someone's it's a bit bedroom. of a home brand <laughs> home brand setup, but that's the way we like it. Raw, yeah. Yeah, raw, never real and raw. And we got a million listeners, so fuck who gives a shit where we're recording. Yeah, Whatever. true, true, true. Um, we had a pretty sick party. We should touch on the little boat party. That was so fun. If you guys um, tuned into the live that we did on Instagram, we apologise profusely about the live because we were a bit pissed. And <laughs> Did you watch that back? I fully forgot that you did a live. No. Oh, dear. It, it got deleted. We couldn't see it. So oh, I was, good. Thank God. So, yeah, that's. That's I mean, thank God, like, thank God we couldn't see it, but also I'd love to like see it and just like <laughs> see how embarrassing we were. Oh, I'm pretty sure we God. were yelling into thinking, can you guys hear us? Oh, like, my God. And they were like, yes, Cringe. we can hear you. You're screaming at us. Oh, but wow. like there was so much noise in the background. <laughs> okay, I just want to paint a picture about this though. Sydney, when I landed, I when I packed from LA, I kind of just packed like a sort of chill suitcase thinking like a few summer dresses, like I'm going to be back on the Goldie, like all my shit's on the Goldie, like I don't need to worry about like wintry stuff because it's summer in oh. Australia. Mind you, I land in Sydney, it is literally freezing, like yeah, it rained every day, cold, miserable. I had to like buy a bunch of clothes online just like long pants because I didn't bring any long pants. Anyway, the boat day came around and it was honestly the nicest day ever. It was There was not one cloud in the sky. On Like we were looking at the weather the whole way in the lead up going, fuck, do we cancel this? Do we keep it? Do we cancel it? And then I was like, nah, you know, people have been on this in the rain. We'll make it fun, rain, hail or shine. Get there. And it is literally a picture perfect day, wasn't it? We were so lucky. I was so, so, I was really keen to cancel it because the weather had been freezing and so rainy, like you said. So we got so lucky. Yeah, there was a lot of moving parts with the boat. We originally did want to have you guys there and like, you know, give away we wanted to have 10 double there. passes or something like that. But then it ended up just being so busy in Sydney and I was organizing it. Britt was helping me. Um, Elodie wasn't doing, was doing too much. Um, and then I just got to one day, I was like, you know what? I am so sorry, listeners. I cannot, I can't have you here because I, 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 it's just too much. I have to organize. And Elodie, I just, we'll just throw a party for our friends and we'll do a big listener one. Um, hopefully in January, yeah. we're going to try and organize something in January for you guys because I'll be back a lot of January. But Chloe pulled the whole thing together in like a week. So for, for like listeners, 
like you know to I don't know it was just not not and we, we didn't also, have enough time to do that but we also the reason why we didn't have you guys there was because we wanted to have our friends and family for their support sort of this year <laughs> You we'll reckon? Touch, we'll touch oh, on yeah. that. We'll touch on that. Do you want to touch on that? <laughs> oh, my God. No, so like we do, oh, Nicole, Cole, well, one of our good friends, Um, she's like, she's always like to me, oh, like she's like at 6 a.m. every Thursday. She's like, she's on there listening and she's always like, oh, you guys get me every time, like every single time she goes on to the, she follows literally the link in the show notes and buys, like uses our discount <laughs> code for whatever the thing is. And she's like, oh, I love it so much. I listen to you guys every week, but every week I'm spending money and I'm like, yes. And she's like, no, seriously, you're going to have to set up like a GoFundMe page so that I can keep listening. <laughs> And I came over to Chloe on the boat and I was like, Nicole is the best listener of our podcast. That. Like I I don't hear anyone anyone else of our friends being like, oh, I listen like pro- like religiously like she's like she's the biggest frother. It's so funny because to be honest, if our best friends did a podcast, I'd just be like I speak to them every day. I don't need to listen. No, <laughs> like, I beg to differ. No. Like I feel like if our best friends did a podcast and like – one, you know, they're traveling and doing stuff or like, you know, having babies or whatever. I mean, I would listen because it's like an easy catch up, but you don't have to catch up. But yeah. I was sort of saying this to a few of the girls on the boat. It was pretty funny, actually. So funny. <laughs> We're all standing on the boat. We'd had a few drinks and I was like, yeah, like we, you know, obviously all of our friends and family listen. Like that's why you guys are here and that's why we're throwing a party for you guys because you guys come first, right? And I was like, you guys listen, right? Like, of course you listen. And Elodie's standing there and it was just like crickets. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I literally was like, oi, like this is like me and Chloe having this chat with the girls there, like <laughs> of, like four or five of like our best friends. And then I'm like, oi, I don't think they listen, like having a bit of a lull in front, like talking to them and Chloe. And Chloe's like, of course they do. Waiting don't for them silly. to say and, like, yeah, of yeah. course we listen. And then Chloe's kind of like, this is a bit awkward. No one's saying anything right now. They're listening to her saying that and still not saying anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck. And then Chloe's like, we're paying for all this alcohol in this boat for them. Are they kidding? They're on here. And I was like, oh. No, I, I made I made, a, I made an executive decision that next time we're going to do like a declaration before you get on the boat and we're going to quiz you and you can't get on if you can't answer the questions. <laughs> yeah, if you if you listen, you know the answers to some shit and then you, that's your entry onto the boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's but, uh, a fucking funny. And then we all we were on research. We, we yeah. So that's kind of why, and the reason why we we also didn't have the listeners because I was like, I don't want to have half listeners and half our friends. We haven't seen our friends in so long. Mm. I want to give all my attention to the listeners if we have listeners on there. Totally. And I didn't want to, you know, be back and forth mm. and juggling the two. So I was like, you know what? Let's just throw a party for our friends and family. We'll spoil them. We'll send it off, and then next party our friends and family will be quizzed before they come and you guys obviously will all know yeah. the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Fuck friends and family, just listeners next time. <laughs> um, but wait, what about the Free Fisher show? That was insane. I, I felt I felt very privileged. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. He he wasn't he wasn't it that was... keen, but I was uh, when we were on the boat. I was like, you know what, babe? Like you're up, get up there. We had to force him into it, and then we couldn't get him off. He yes. was fucking frothing. It was so much fun. He was just like, that's it. He's just like, oh, we we've only got four three hours on the boat. He's like, do you mind if we just ask them if we can stay longer? Like, we'll just pull up and we'll go get more drinks and then we'll come back. So we did exactly that. We like pulled up. At 8 p.m., all of our preggy friends got off. They were like, see ya. We must have been <laughs> ranked so drunk. All the preggy friends. And then we got more alcohol. And I was like, how much longer were you on the boat? I actually thought it was only like an hour, but apparently we are on there for a few hours. I was so ruined by the end. I was so tired. Mm. I literally, a few of our friends went and kept partying. I, I was just like, nah, I'm calling it a night. Elodie called it a mm. night. I got home. I woke up the next morning sitting up in bed. Like I literally got into bed and I didn't even, I mustn't have even, I must have been so tired that I didn't even lay down. I Fell woke up, I was like, wow. Yeah, I've never done that wow, one Wow, you were pissed. I actually peaked really early on the boat and then once we dropped half the people off and kept going out, like the boat left again and we went out to party again, I completely stopped drinking then, started sculling water like the mummy I am. And remember I went into the front of the cabin because my boobs were exploding. I went and expressed a bunch of milk and, and um, I think people were like drinking it and stuff. <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, and then I was I went back to M- Minnie was being minded by one of my really close friends' mums, and then I went back there and stayed there, and Minnie was giving me cuddles, and then surprisingly was not I was feeling so fine the next day, so that was great. But yeah. I'd expressed lots of milk that previous week, so that um, if I wanted to go even harder, I could. I yeah, could have, before but- anyone jumps down her throat about drinking, she she's a very good oh. mother. She um yeah yeah she everyone can beat it. People are like. Yeah, people are like, you're not meant to be drinking while breastfeeding. And I'm like, I'm not drunk breastfeeding, you freaks. Minnie's not even with me. I'm she's being <laughs> minded. She's got bottles of milk like yeah. that I've expressed. Like people are just hilarious. Believe me, there's a lot worse people out there than you when they breastfeed. <laughs> oh mate. Yeah. No. No. Minnie's Minnie's my little precious little McEgg. Like I would never like what it yeah, people are just hilarious. Okay, Anyways, so enough of that um before we move on from the boat I wanted to just give a little thank you to all the people that helped um make it happen we we had fears on the boat we had um which is my seltzer we had mex ink and that was delicious mm, by margaritas. the way they're like yummy margaritas in a can another friend so um has started that the zephyr boat which is incredible people in sydney mm. get on that boat um, yes. who else we had, we wore, we both wore Sir the label. Actually, a lot of people asked us what we were wearing and what was on our feet. We had, um, we both wore Sir the label outfits. I had like the dress version. Elodie had like the two piece. And then I think my boots were Doc Martens. They're the best. I bought them in London mm. last year and they're just that like, soft leather. It's, they're just the best shoes ever. What, did, what ones, what were your? Mine were like just these chunky rock, rock, rock boots. Yeah. They're just like the rock version of Doc Martens. Um, so comfortable and then you had yeah yeah so both so the label and then who else oh and the two beautiful girls that did our makeup we'll get their instagrams and we'll we'll share them so any sydney girls um if you need your hair and makeup done yeah leah was incredible we both had a different friends do our makeup um But, yeah, so that was the boat party. So you guys basically made it happen. So if you guys didn't listen, we wouldn't have been able to reach a mill. So here we are. Um, And then another thing that we did, which was like I came straight in hot to, was our Hustlers Christmas party. (laughs) But it was so great for you to fly in and I was already in Sydney and like immediately we're catching up with all the girls straight away at that that Christmas party. It was just the best. Um, But how turbo is Sydney? Like it's just nonstop. I... Like I absolutely, I love it because, you know, I love to go, 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 but I miss my house and just chilling and like at home, everyone comes to me. Whereas in Sydney, I'm just driving around everywhere. But it's probably really good for Minnie because she's on the road and she's just like getting used to just dry, like, you know, just moving and she's sleeping through it all. It's great. (laughs) Oh, she's such a little angel. Paul texted Minion me last tour. night the videos that you've been sending him and I was like, oh, that's cool. She doesn't send me fucking videos. <laughs> Every five minutes he's like, I miss her. Show me Minnie. He's so cute. Well, he's I obsessed. say that you don't send me videos. Oh, he is obsessed. Yeah, but I talk to you more every day. Yeah, okay. Fisher is so cute. It's he was ridiculous. just like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to go to work when I have a baby like that. And I'm like, mm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> oh, once, <laughs> once it starts screaming at on like- you. <laughs> You'll be like, See he's ya. so cute, and then Minnie would scream, and he'd be like, "Oh, um, so uh, here you go. <laughs> like, nah, nah, you've got to, you've got to settle her now. <laughs> All she does is feed, sleep, and scream. Have you have you seen a, like you know what what are they what do you call the people that you see where they like measure them and see if they're like on track and stuff like that? Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, she had a six week update or oh, yeah. check up or whatever the other day, and um, she got weighed, so she's put on a fair bit of weight. Like she's like almost doubled her birth weight, but you know she's still small. Like I'm pretty sure because my friends I was, having. Yeah, I was looking at that photo that you posted with our our other friend um, Corey. Just had a baby last week, and they're both in the bubble cloud together. And I'm like, yeah. Minnie is smaller than Kobe. <laughs> How is that so? <laughs> Seriously, some of our friends are having babies and they're like bigger than Minnie and Minnie's six weeks. She's just living up to her name. She's just Minnie. Okay. But she was so small, you know, and oh she's God. she's chubby though now. So she's a healthy growing go- girl. But, yeah, like even the, her measurement, like she's like pretty short still and I don't know, but oh. she's a perfect growing girl. She's all healthy. The checkup was great. Um, She's just cute and small. So And, you know, I kind of love it. Yeah. But as long as she's growing and she's healthy, we're all gravy. Um, Chloe, give us a little 
Update on you, IVF, everything. Tell us. Okay. Um, obviously, I've been a little bit quiet about this. I feel like I've been almost waiting for the – because there hasn't really been too much to update, to be honest with you guys. Um, I've sort of just been waiting for this finale episode because there's been a lot going on with like Minnie being born, blah, 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 or like everything else. I was just like, well, let's just save everything to the, to the end and then I can just give you the spiel. So – I eventually found an IVF uh, doctor in LA, which took me a little bit of shopping around, but I, um, I I got really good recommendations for the woman that I saw when I was having acupuncture. And they, I got in to see her and she did an ultrasound. She's like, oh, my God, you've got like a quite a big cyst on one of your ovaries, which would have resulted in the Clomid and me stimulating these hormones, but the eggs just growing and growing and growing and not being actually released. So they were like trapped. Um, so she basically, she was like, we can do a round of IVF, but we're not going to do any sort of round of IVF until we get this cyst to move. Um, and also my periods had been quite light, uh, which was a bit unusual for me. So I ended up going and getting acupuncture and a fertility acupuncture. And I got put on quite a few, uh, Chinese herbs And I literally went back to see my IVF doctor the following week and the cyst had actually gone. Like in one week, acupuncture and Chinese herbs, we were able to move that large cyst. And then that event, that in turn brought on my period. It wasn't, it was just probably normal, the period. But um, so then once I got that, I was able to do a round round of IVF, uh, egg collection round. We worked on Paul's sperm as well because... It's a bit of a weird one. He did a semen collection when we were in LA and she was like, it's really low. Um, But when I spoke to our doctor in Australia, Paul's semen wasn't bad. So the only thing that we could really put it down to and the only thing that had changed was that we had COVID. And apparently my doctor was saying that it is common that the sperm can be affected by having from having COVID and Paul was quite sick. So, so scary. It's a three month cycle, and the it was it was kind of approaching the three month mark since we had had it. So it was on its like the, the sperm's on its new cycle. Um, but he definitely he saw a urologist. He did some a few tests. He was taking um, some like medication called Fertile Aid, um, which the doctor you can just buy off Amazon or whatever. Um, and a few Chinese herbs and some acupuncture. And then by the time I had finished my round of IVF and he did a semen collection, it was basically back up to normal again, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah, then we did the round of IVF. It was over – it was just before I came here actually. It was over Paul's birthday weekend when I broke my wrist. <laughs> I'll get into that story um, Fuck. after. Yeah, you guys need to hear the wrist story. It's hilarious. Um, and, yeah, so we got – how many – do you remember how many eggs? I can't even remember yeah, how many yeah, eggs got, I got. You got six and then okay. from. Yeah, so I got six eggs uh, and then five of them fertilized overnight, which I was like happy with. And then they put mm. the semen, um, they actually used a thing called Zymot and it's a microchip which you put the semen through and it defragments them and just like pulls out all the really good ones. So that also helped the sperm. Wow. And they don't cool. call you every day in America. They just basically tell you. They actually upload reports. It's super random onto your portal and you just can check yourself, which is was not bad because I could just always check myself. Hey, um, Chloe, but, yeah. so in Australia, do they not do that fragment thing with the sperm? Well, when I was talking... Talking to Dr. Ong about it, he was just like, oh, yeah, we can do it here in Australia. We have access to Zymot. You don't need to see a urologist. He's like, I actually can do it here. And I'm like, well, why don't you why do it? He's like, I only do, do a few. He's like, I only do really do it a few times a year. But okay. I'm like, oh, interesting. Anyway, it's something to look into. Because um, you'd want to get the best swimmer. And yeah, the best, well, that's like, what essentially this does. It egg. was yeah. it was funny because when the woman was telling me, she's like, I'm only going to do this tr- um, collection with you if Paul uses this microchip. It's like FDA approved. Or, um, and I said to Paul, I'm like, 
you know, the only way they're going to do this if they put this microchip in you, like blah, blah, blah. He's like, the fucking putting a microchip in me? Are you crazy? I'm like, but it's the only way, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I got to the end and she's like, no, 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 no. It's just Shut like a fucking up. thing that you put the sperm through. You don't put any microchip <laughs> in the person. <laughs> like he's going to have to get cut open and put no, like I really a GPS like, and a microchip actually, in him. <laughs> I was really like actually going like, no, you Shut actually up. have to have this microchip. He's like, Chloe. I'm not fucking putting a microchip in my balls. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's so, fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, so then on day balls. It, on day five, I get the report and I've got one that reached blastocyst on day five. And I was like, great. Why the fuck am I going through like leaps and hurdles and shit like that when I'm getting the same outcome as I was getting in Australia? I was kind of off it. And then I didn't, what I didn't realize is they keep like, le- like allow them to continue growing for a few extra days. And then the following day, so on day six, I get an email saying that two more had reached blastocyst. And I was like, oh my God, three, yay. And How then good. on day seven, which in Australia, they don't allow them to grow to day seven because that generally means that there's like a genetic issue. Um, but I got another one on day seven. So I ended up in with four in total and the Amazing. grading of them, I had two really good ones and two not so good ones. We then um, got them genetically tested, which I just recently, only like last week, got the results back and two were genetically fine and two were not. So we got rid of the other two. So we have two good little embryos in LA sitting patiently on ice for us. Um, but in amongst all of this, my doctor over in LA was just going, mm, your uterus looks like it's got some mm. scarring. And I was like, mm, what does that mean? And she's like, well, you've got this thing called Asherman syndrome. It's It generally comes from when you um, have a DNC and basically the way that once it's scraped and your uterus starts healing up, it starts sticking together. So she was showing me like on an ultrasound how like one side of my uterus is quite full and then the other side was like sort of a little bit pinched. Uh, in the like the, the hardest part about this is I was at this point kind of juggling two doctors so I'm like going back and I'm relaying all this information to Dr. Ong and then I'm dealing with my doctor in LA and you know people are giving me feedback on like what I should and shouldn't be doing like family and friends are like you should do this you should I'm like listen I've been going down this route for so long like I'm going to make my own decisions if I want to deal with the two doctors and I want to get re- like I want to get their opinions on both. Just let me just do that, you know. Um, so basically I spoke to Dr. Ong and I said, oh, they think that I have this Asherman syndrome. Like the last time you went in me when you did a DNC in Ju- June or July, did you see this? And he's like, no, nothing. Like I saw nothing. So if anything was to have happened, it would have been between like then and now. Anyway, yeah. the doctor in LA was saying, she's like, well, I'm not going to do a transfer for you until you get this fixed. I want you to go and see this person in San Francisco. He's the best, blah, blah, blah. They go in, they scrape it out. Then it takes about three months for it to heal. And I was like, well, it's hard to say that I really need this for a start. It was only through like a one little ultrasound and, you know, Dr. Yeah. Um was trying to tell me, he's like, I don't think that that's right like I don't think that you need it but then she was saying I did need it and then I kind of was like fine I'll um I originally said I'm going to go home to Australia can I just get it sorted out in Australia and she was like no you actually have to see this one specific doctor and then I was like well can I not see one in LA and she's like no you got to go to San Fran and I was like fuck okay whatever and you had that gut feeling where you were like I just want a second opinion because I'm I'm not feeling like I have to so it was interesting that Doctor, like your other doctor then said the complete opposite. Yeah. What you were saying to me is that every time you see like a new IVF person, it's like the first thing they want to do is go inside, do a laparoscopy and have a look what's in there. And like I, like you can understand why they want to do that because you're a new patient essentially, but yeah. it's just annoying that you've already done that. Yeah. And that's what I think I, I, I've i just kind of come to realize, like, because obviously mm. when I went to Dr. Ong, that was the first thing we did. We're like, let's go in, let's have a look, let's check, which I have already done with him. And I, I essentially feel like that that's sort of what she wanted to do, but she doesn't mm. perform it. She puts it onto this other doctor. Anyway, I actually love this doctor in LA. She's amazing. So that's why I'm like, I'm really just trying to juggle and just try and make the right decisions between the two of them because I really I do believe that they do things differently over in the states than what they do in Australia and hence why I had a better result in my collection I was doing all different things to what I was doing here 
So I'm just, I really am leaving the book open. Anyway, I've come home to Australia. I got um, a referral to go to a Sydney woman's Sydney ultrasound for women to have like a really good look. And the, oh, the sonographer was just like, honestly, I can't see anything that is alarming. There's definitely no Asherman syndrome from what I can see. Um, your uterus looks completely normal. Like I had all these extra follicles, which I don't usually have. She's like, everything looks like it's gearing mm. completely fine. And then I um, came and I saw Dr. Ung this week. I had an exemption to leave my home quarantine to go and see him. And I saw him and he did another ultrasound. He's like, Chloe, your uterus is completely fine. He goes, see, you know, it's full on one end. It's like a little bit like pinched at one, the other end. But he's like, that's normal. And we pulled up all these Google images of like uteruses oh, wow. and he showed me. He's like, Chloe, it's, seriously, it's normal. Like I don't want to go in and give more trauma to your uterus than it needs sort of thing. Mm. Getting um, cut open is not to be taken, like you know, lightly. Obviously, I'm not in LA. Um, we're going to go back to LA and hopefully do a transfer early next year. I'm still trying to keep it a little bit under wraps from everyone only because, you know, once it does sort of happen for me, I do want to be able to surprise people. So I, I don't want to like mm. – that's kind of the reason why I haven't like been following up with everyone the whole time because I just want to keep some element of surprise. Um, but, yeah. yeah. And once you do it and once you do the transfer, if every man and their dog knows, everyone's like, how's it going, how's yeah. it going? It's a bit stressful, especially exactly. if you don't have an update yourself or you're waiting for that blood test yeah. and it's just like it's all a bit yeah. too much. But, yeah, you've d- definitely done the right thing by getting all the opinions. And-, and I still think as well with where I'm at right now, people are like, you should do this, you should do that. I'm like, honestly, I'm just taking mm. it one period at a time right now where like I – Every mm. month changes for me depending on where I am or like where I am in the world or whether I'm here, or whether I'm there, what time of the yeah. month things falls on. Like I'm honestly, I'm just like I'm trying not to plan things and, yeah, it, it, we've got a big year next year um, of Paul's work and we'll be in Europe for the whole Europe season and, you know, it. everything happens for a reason and I am just becoming more. It's, taking a long, it's taken a long time but it, I'm kind of – sitting with the fact that maybe it just isn't my time and you know it's fine like we're doing we're still doing amazing things like I you know Mm. I've I've got my friends I've got my family I I just needed to sit tight and it will happen like I've got now I've got four Mm. three embryos on ice it will happen I just have to like just sit and wait now it's gonna wait my turn I love hearing you say that Chloe that's such a good (laughs) attitude it's been the biggest fucking year or two doing this shit for you and you're literally exploring every avenue and for you to say that right now and just feel and just have that patience about you it's just amazing I think as well I'm just really happy that I'm home like it's it's Mm. just been here on the Gold Coast um it's a reset. It's just, it just changed. Like my whole like energy completely changes being here. Like in LA, I love LA and I love being on the road, but I feel it's a little bit unstable at times in the sense that like I don't have you mm. at hand. I don't have my family at hand. Like sometimes Paul's on the road. Sometimes I'm there by myself. I've got great friends mm. over there, which I love. And they're on like a whole different journey. Like none of them are having children. So I guess it makes it a little bit easier for me to be over there because none of them are even thinking about kids at this point. Yeah. Whereas though I'm like thinking about all my friends at home that are all having kids and being just being home this week, I'm like, wow, I just feel like weirdly a full weight has just lifted off my shoulders mm. and I'm like, I feel like I can breathe. I'm not like being in any rush for anything right now. I'm just like trying to enjoy joy. It's beautiful weather. Like, yeah, I'm I'm in a good place oh, right now. There's, there's no <laughs> place well like home, can... sis. No. Um, but I, I want to that. stop talking about me. I want to ask about Minnie. Not about you. I just want to ask about Minnie. <laughs> um, you being down in Sydney, you met a lot of very special people for the, for the first time. Mm. Well, she met. Can you – let's talk about who she's yeah. met, how the reactions were. I'm obviously down in Sydney visiting my dad who's t- really, really ill. He's um, – yeah, I mean, I guess he's um, imminently – yeah, his life's about to end. And with the brain cancer that I, he has that I've – I think I've told everyone about, um, if you're new here, he's got glioblastoma of the brain that he got diagnosed with. 
a month after Chump passed away um, was a lot for us to take in. It's They said he wasn't going to make it. He said that he may not make it till last Christmas. He's now hopefully going to make it to this Christmas, but we're not sure. We're just spending as much time with him as possible, but it's really full on where he is. He's at, um, he's at his beautiful girlfriend Sue's house, who we absolutely love. Um, she's taking amazing care of him. She's amazing. Um, but like, and it's, and it's beautiful, but he's got so many friends from all around Australia coming to Sydney to see him. And it's just, it's like a hotel there at the moment, like a revolving door of people and super overwhelming. And it's so beautiful. Everyone's coming and telling dad all these amazing stories from growing up and, you know, trips they've had away. He's got some really cool friends. He's like, it's like, dad's like a kid and he's always been a kid. So no one's, yeah, he's always like traveled the world with his friends and he's just, he's, he's, motorbike road around Australia a million times he's just got the funniest stories like the other day his friend's over and he's showing me photos that he's taken like out of photo frames from where he lives and he's like you can have this one of your dad and dad's like naked canoeing down some river with a goanna hanging across the front of the canoe like I'm not oh my kidding God, I like, thought you were to say a goanna as his penis <laughs> <laughs> with his goanna <laughs> hanging out Thank God I couldn't. <laughs> Thank God I couldn't see his bits. But there's literally like this goanna hanging across the front of his canoe that they're going to go and like cook. And he's just honestly the funniest person. Like his friend was telling us the other day. He's because my dad used to be a policeman, and this is actually so funny. So his his friend was like saying. So there was a time where dad was um I don't know, having some time off being out on the streets or whatever in as a cop he was an undercover detective at one point and then he was like having some time in the office at the at the DY cop shop which is in Sydney and um him and his friend were like at the front desk and like you know in DY people come in drunk all the time and my dad had this pet possum and he'd bring it to work and it sat on top of his head and just sat there like I'm not joking so at night time these drunk idiots would come in and just have a yarn to the fucking policeman at the front desk and it was so funny my dad's friend telling my dad the other day I was I was on the floor in stitches and th- these drunk people are like going oh mate there's uh, uh there's a possum there's an animal <laughs> sitting on your head and dad's like bro I think you've had a few too many there's nothing on my head like and there's Stop like it. fully yeah there's legitimately a fucking possum sitting on his head and dad's playing this game with them pretending they're too drunk that that like of course there's no fucking possum on his head it's like the wow biggest that is so log. your dad I love that and it's like this Saturday night thing they do they'd be like oh what are you gonna bring tonight and put on your head put a blue tongue lizard on your head or put like a possum on it's just they just fuck with all the drunken people that come in it's honestly hilarious like the shit I hear, I'm just like, you have, you are so, dad is hilarious. I, if I had had, if I have his life or close to it, I am frothing because he has, he's hilarious. And then he retired quite early and has traveled the world. He's just so funny. And yeah, yeah, he's, anyway, so been hanging with dad a lot. It's been amazing and it's really emotional. Um, meaning has been spending some good time with him, which is so, so, so cute. I mean, look, dad's just really sleeping the whole time and, um, Sue, Sue, his girlfriend's taking amazing care of him. I feel, yeah, it's a lot of weight on her shoulders. She's, yeah, it's a lot. So bro and I are trying to help as much as possible and spend heaps of time with dad. And then Chump's family are also in Sydney at the moment. Chump's mum's also ill as well. Um, so she's having treatment and we're just hoping that she's going to come out of it okay. So they've spent some really precious moments with Minnie too, which has been so beautiful and so, so emotional and lots of happy tears and lots of sad tears and, yeah, a lot of where the fuck is chumpy moments um, but a lot of, you know, wow, Minnie is just so perfect and amazing and she's keeping us all going and she's just giving us so much love and energy and, it's it's the most special thing ever, um, the most bittersweet thing in the world. Like it's it's actually just hard to put the emotions into words. Often we just don't say anything. We just hold her, or we're just they're mm-hmm. holding her, and we're looking at each other, and we're just like, what the fuck? Like, um, so yeah. And then everyone else has met her. Mum, I feel so sorry for Mum up on the Gold Coast. She she's missing Minnie so much, and Minnie's getting so big. I'm like, fuck. By the time Mum, because I don't know how long I'm gonna be here for now. Like. Um, it'll just, you know, with with what's happening with Dad, we just don't know how long, me and my brother don't know how long we're going to be here for and she, Minnie's pr- probably going to be in like freaking primary school by the time we get, <laughs> by the time <laughs> mum sees her next. She's growing so fast. But um, we'll definitely be down here for Christmas and New Year's. Um, 
And so yeah, I've also seen like other family members, like my auntie and my popper and things, which is really cute, really funny, actually, Chloe. So I was in Kayama the other day with my auntie walking around and um, and I hate, I hate talking about shit like this, but I just want to say it because it's more about rummy. So the, a few different people came up and were like, oh, my God, is this Rumble Door? Can I get a photo? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what about me, bitch? What about Minnie? What about Minnie? And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're just obsessed with rummy. We're here for rummy. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. My auntie was like, what the fuck's going on? I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of have this podcast thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Minnie, I mean, not no, not Minnie. I think rummy, like people just froth, pretty famous. like, you know, the dog frothers just really froth on um Rummy. So me and Minnie feeling a bit left out, like taking photos of Rummy and strangers. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. Rummy, Rummy needs a good brush though. When I was down in Sydney, Elodie like Shut doesn't up. brush her. And so she's going through like a stage where she's just shedding a little bit. So there's she's coming into summer, doll. She's everywhere. hot. She's hot and Dude, heavy. Fur covering everything. Okay. Well, I don't, she, she doesn't get brushed because she doesn't usually molt, but like, I mean, she's yeah, it's coming into moment. summer and she's having a little molting Shed. moment and Chloe, Chloe's like a freak and just notices everything. Like she doesn't, Chloe doesn't not notice anything. It's heavy, like nothing. You oh, can't speaking of noticing, speaking of noticing. So this is actually funny. <laughs> I know the what other you're day, say. the other day when I got home, I was just like, oh, so can we just talk about my, because, you know, Elodie was being watering all my plants, which is a bit unfair. And I, I want to apologize because I really realized that I've got a jungle in my house and we're going to have to do some culling before I go away next because it's, it's a little bit Easily silly. 75 plants in that yeah, fucking so, mansion. And then I have to, someone has to take responsibility when I'm away. But anyway, so the other day we all, I was just like, can we talk about the plant in my, in my kitchen area? Um, it's like, it's looking a bit sick. And she was just like, <laughs> Yes, the plants. What about the plants? And I was like, um, <laughs> have you like, did you kill it and replace it or something like that? And she's like, well, yes, I did <laughs> kill the plant and I did replace it, but I thought I put a new. Anyway, we go on and on about this story and we're fucking dying because I was like, I cannot believe that you actually replaced a plant because you killed it and I picked up on it. Like, But, but this is the best Instantly. part about this story. We were talking about two completely different plants. So we, I was sitting on the couch that night and I was filming the plant that I that is a little bit sick and I was like, look at this plant. Like, look how sick it looks. And Elodie's like, oh, my God, that's not even the plant that I killed and replaced. That's a, just a different plant completely altogether. But I do know <laughs> the one that she did kill. I do notice that it's very small. But the I other one also you didn't looks that one. Well, I did notice it, but I just assumed Bullshit. that. Bullshit. No, no, no. I, I assumed that the, the 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 stringy bits that hang down had died, and you just trimmed it. I didn't realize you so killed the got whole this thing and replaced really it. Really amazing devil's ivy that hangs down really low, like around her kitchen, but it gets it cops heaps of morning light. Chloe's always going on about how nice it looks, and it is amazing. But you know, when Minnie was a minute old, I wasn't like, ah. Oh, let's go over to Chloe's and water the fucking devil's ivy. So, like, it got left for a week or so here and there. Um, But I was pretty at it. Like, you know, I was pretty good with these plants. Like, they're lucky little yeah, fucking yeah. green things. And then, you know, this plant was not coping. So, like, I did try and trim it and I was like, fuck, Chloe and Fish hopefully not coming back for a few months so hopefully it can grow. And then next minute they're, they're about to rock up home. So I'm like fucking driving <laughs> up and down the Gold Coast trying to find a good plant shop that has this plant but, like, established and long. And then, you know, end up spending fucking that much on this freaking plant so that I can find an established one that's because, you know, these ones always come with like two leaves. So I'm trying to find like a very established one so that she doesn't know. I'm just notice. looking at it. I'm looking at it now and it's it's doing yeah, good. Look, it's it'll, look, it'll it's a back. very healthy one, but it's not as long as what obviously it's, it's way, way nowhere near as long. But anyway, she rec she actually didn't notice it. She was complaining about some other plant that He's that, got a yeah, and then and then when I tell her about the real pop, she's like, oh, yeah, I noticed that one. I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. um, but no, look, why don't? Because I'm not home. I'm in Sydney. You can go and water my uh, 75 no, I plants at my house. I'm Boy. I'm out of quarantine tomorrow, so I'm going to go straight over there. I'm going to do the plants and get mail and do some things. Because last time I left my plants in the care of my mum, who she doesn't know much. She, I mean, she doesn't care much for plants and flowers. Like I get it's so funny. I gave her a bunch of flowers recently because she's like, no one ever buys me flowers. So I'm like, all right, I'll give you flowers. Guess what she does? She chucks the flowers in a vase and puts no water in the vase. So these lilies are just, I'm like, wonder why oh. these lilies aren't opening up. That's so weird. 
been like a no week water. and there's just no water in, in the vase. Like oh fucking hell. It's like first things first, water the plant. I felt so <laughs> sorry for the poor little lilies. Oh, I love um, lilies. But no, like all my plants were dead when I came back. So it was pretty heavy. Had to go and like just buy buy all new plants. <laughs> Oh, um, but no, Chloe. Let's go back to your wrist story because I think heaps of people want to hear about that. It's it's hilarious. I mean, it's yes. not funny, but it kind of is. Yes. So I'll try and keep it short and sweet. But basically, it was Paul's birthday. You probably saw on my Instagram. We did this amazing pub bike crawl. There was forty of our friends. We I had the best day planned out. It was really the best day. We had so much fun, and then the very last stop, I. We were all like at the end of one of the piers at Venice and we one of the boys had like a massive boombox. So we were like dancing and having a good time. Then all of us girls were like, we need to go to the toilet. So we were going on to the next bar and we're all riding down the pier and Paul was like at the very front of the pier and then I kind of like went around a few to like catch up to Paul and one of the guys was like, your kickstand's down, your kickstand's down. So I was trying to kick my kickstand up and the split second I looked down, my front wheel clicked Paul's back wheel and I oh literally, God. instead of grabbing, and I kind of just like wobbled a little bit, and instead of grabbing the brake, I slammed on the accelerator on the electric bike and just oh floored God. straight into the pier, like at 20 kilometres an hour, straight into the concrete pier. But instead of my face hitting, I put my hand out and Thank obviously God. broke my wrist. My, my knee fractured my knee my kneecap, which is still very sore. You could have broke your nose, doll. Um, yeah, well, that's why I did this instead. Not Shit. a vibe at all. The hand is so annoying. It's my right hand. I still can't, like, cut food up. Like, mm. when I eat dinner and stuff like that, Paul has to, like, cut all my food up like a baby. <laughs> so when I did it, I, I kind of was, like, moving my hand and my fingers. I'm like, no, it's fine. Well, I kind of was under the bike and poor, poor thing turned around when he saw I'd stacked it and his face literally just – I will never forget the vision of his face when he saw me on the ground under my bike and he's just oh thrown his bike, brand new bike that I got in for his birthday. He just like threw it across the pier, oh. ran over to me and he went to try and help me up. And at that point I was like, oh, my God, don't move me, don't move me, like sort of thing because I it kind of I felt yeah. it, like that's when it started hurting. And then I was like, oh it's no. fine, it's fine, moving my fingers. And then I realised really quick soon after that it wasn't fine and Mick – um, Mick Fanning, the professional surfer, he's one of our good mates and he was there and he's obviously seen so many broken bones in his life and he came up and was like, yeah, no, nah, it's definitely broken. Um, so <sighs> we then got in an Uber and we went to the hospital. Um, it was just a shit show. And at, at the time I was doing my mm. round of IVF, so I had on the back of my bike in like an esky, like all my needles that needed to be done at 7 p.m. on the dot. If you if you know IVF, they have to do oh, things yeah. like on the dot. This happened at like 6.30. So I had to bring one of the girls to the hospital with me who was drunk, completely like smashed. And like I wasn't – luckily I wasn't too drunk because I was doing IVF so I'd only had a few drinks. So I was pretty with it and as soon as my I, I hurt myself, I was like 100% sober. Yeah, straight um, you out. Yeah, so we get in there and I'm holding my wrist in place basically and I'm like, okay, you need to listen, use your listening skills here. You need, And it wasn't just a normal needle. It had to be freaking mixed. So I'm like, okay, use get that needle skills. out, get the, get, get, the, um, get the liquid out of there. You need to put it into this one, dis- dissolve the, the powder, take it back out. And then in the meantime, I've like looked so at her scary. and she's like, oh, we have a problem. I'm like, what? And she's like, her whole hand is bleeding. And I'm like, what have you done? She's like, I've pricked myself. I'm like, can this <laughs> get any worse? Like, and You're Paul's joking. out. I actually need to get the video of Paul because Paul, uh, I, at one point I was like, babe, he was standing at the bathroom door and they're trying to kick him out of the hospital because obviously with COVID that you're only allowed to have one person in there. And I was like, can you just oh film gosh. something? Because this is actually, we'll laugh Pretty at this funny. later. And so I think there's a video somewhere and we're in the bathroom and there's like blood dripping off her hand and I'm standing there holding my wrist in place. And luckily I had another needle. So I was like, you need to change this needle, oh jab it in me. We got it all done. But yeah, and then yeah, went to the, they didn't plaster it at the start. They just put like a stint on it. Then I had to go see an orthopedic surgeon. Meanwhile, it's actually broken both of the bones in my wrist and it wasn't in place right because I just saw a surgeon oh only two weeks ago and he's like, you probably need surgery, but it's too far gone. So we have to break your wrist and re put pins and shit in it. 
But then we took the cast off and we realized that it was actually kind of straight, although it is still really sore. It's coming up to it. We just hit the five week mark next mm. Thursday. I'll get the cast off and then we'll do like some intensive physio. But I actually wouldn't be surprised if we needed to re Need to do break it and do the surgery. But yeah, that's oh the gosh. story of my hand. And I really hope that <sighs> like pff, Paul's playing I was... games in Aspen in January oh, and no. I'm, I'm like, I actually don't think I can go because I'm definitely not going to be able to snowboard and that is just an absolute tease. Yeah. He's like, you can make snowmen. So I'm like, nah, man. <laughs> no, no. Drink hot chocolates and make a snowman. Nah, sit that one out maybe. Yeah, You've been there. You've done that before. You can't snowboard. It's, it's a bit sad. Let's see what happens with the wrist. Fingers crossed it heals up um, okay and you don't have to get that surgery. So what's next? What are you? What's Christmas and New Year's Eve plans, Chloe? Um, so Christmas, I'm here. Paul's in Dubai at the moment. He's not back until just before Christmas. So we'll be able to spend Christmas here a few days here. And then mm. we go on the 29th to New York. He plays in New York on the 30th. The 31st, we're in Phoenix and Vegas. Um, and then the first, we are in Cabo and we have a few days in Cabo and then we're going to be home. So we come home on like the 6th of January and we're back here. Well, Paul has the X Games in Aspen in the middle of Jan, but I'll probably just stay all the way through and, yeah, I, I, we go to Brazil in February. So it, I'm excited. I'll have Holy a few weeks shit. at home here with you. We can get back into um our routine, our, our routine together with Minnie and show Hopefully. around the Gold Coast. Can't wait. What about you? Oh, Minnie on tour. That's amazing. Um, not really sure about Christmas. Depends kind of what happens with Dad. So we will see. Hopefully I'm spending Christmas with him and my brother. Um, and New Year's Eve, yeah, not really sure either. It all just kind of like it's all up in the air. So I think, I, I think I'll probably be down in Sydney for Christmas and New Year. Well, yeah. For all of that so we'll just have to see what happens it's kind of hard to say um someone's really asked really want to know about my margarita recipe so when I'm not drinking the mex ink cans which are fucking amazing they taste exactly like a margarita that you would get at a really nice restaurant but in a can um they that I am making my own margaritas and literally if you just google like classic margarita recipe this is all that's in it so you have a shot of tequila you have half a shot of Contro and you have a shot of lime juice and a shot's like 30 mil. Um, And then you have a bit of agave syrup. Now, if I want to make a bit of a jalapeno margi, I get those jar of jalapenos and I pour a little bit of the the liquid into the shaker and shake them. Sometimes I'll blend this with heaps of ice so it's it's a blended frozen margi, but I actually really like just the classic shaken ones. And then, um, you, of course, always have to put a fuck ton of salt on the rim. And I love this. I love, I lick all the salt oh, off. See, I yes. don't. I like, um, I like use my finger to get all the salt off that bit where my mouth goes. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm, like I'm all, I lick all of the salt off. That's why I always wake up so fucking thirsty. Um, and yeah, so, so sometimes I want to make it like a fruity margi, in which case I'll put like a wee bit of, um, I don't know, like pineapple or watermelon juice in, but I usually bit. do just like, I like oh, things me. a little bit classic without the flavoring. Sometimes I don't even put the sugar, like the agave syrup in. Um, and, yeah, it's a stiff margarita, so that's how I like to do it. But, yeah, you can mix it mix it up. Sometimes I put um, – you could put like a bit of coconut water in if you wanted a bit yeah. coconutty and then not so strong because you get fucking pierced really quickly off the straight ones because it's literally – just tequila, just contro, and lime juice. So she hasn't made one of, of these for a while, people. By the way, because we I okay, haven't made these in of, ages. People, uh, we've had a few people concerned um, about Elodie <laughs> and her drinking. So I just read that to, email. We, okay, we've got this email here, which I think is just like hilarious, it's fucking hilarious. These people so, are just a joke. Okay, so we got this email. Hello. We were considering approaching you to sponsor a few episodes. We and many of us on the south coast of New South Wales are committed followers of Elodie's amazing journey. Unfortunately, Mm. it has come to light for many of us that on Elodie's social media, there has been a lot of posts with Elodie consuming alcohol. Whilst this is an individual choice, it is also, it is not encouraged whilst breastfeeding. Duh. Little Mini is truly a gift and a miracle and obviously much loved. We would love to sponsor episodes, but feel it goes against what we believe. This is in no way to criticise Elodie's parenting skills, just concern for the baby. (laughs) 
First of all, I need a fucking drink after reading that shit. (laughs) Second of all, don't even bother emailing us telling us you don't want to sponsor our podcast. We don't we don't give a fuck plus. We don't even have space for you to sponsor yeah. anyway. So um <laughs> thirdly <laughs> um oh I can't. The the person was like not even a real company because they didn't have a logo or like you know the email was like just not legit. Thirdly, fourthly, fourthly. I don't know what I was up to. Um not that it's anyone's business, but I completely understand. Like I, I love, I do, I understand the concern. That's absolutely fine. There's no way in hell I've been getting, you know, like drinking heaps or getting pissed and breastfeeding. There's literally no way in hell I would ever do that to my child. Um, that's common sense. But if it needs to be said, I'll tell you. Um, if I am if I am planning on having a few drinks, you better believe I am expressing my breast milk prior, and I am getting it in bottles, and I'm getting some my her babysitter to feed it to her, um, yeah. and then I'm waiting, and then I'm expressing while I'm drinking and throwing that milk out, of course, and then I'm waiting until I'm complete, like t- 24 hours later, and my boobs are good, and I'm feeding her again when there's no alcohol in my system, um, but you know you are allowed to have a glass of wine. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're allowed to have a glass of wine here and there. So the Karens can beat it. You're not Minnie's mum. I'm Minnie's mum. I'm I'm not an alcoholic. Um, I'm surprised that you weren't concerned about me when I literally was, like last an year alcoholic. when I was drinking a little bit. But, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> when I was in dire straits and my life had been flipped upside down and I was drinking. But thanks for your concern now when I'm actually being, like, the goodest girl in the world. Goodest. Um, okay, so enough of that. Let's end on a high, darlings. So, yeah, Chloe, what's planned for Darling Shan next year? I can't believe we're ever talking about 2022. No. Where did 2021 go? Seriously, I'm still sitting back in 2019. It's weird. My life's still <laughs> stuck in 2021. 2020, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's Fuck. a bit going on. Um, so for 2022, how many times can we say 20? Um, Darling mm. Shine, we are doing season three, so we will be back in your ear holes next year. We are going to employ a new little person who is going to come on board as our, like, marketing, social media, social media. sort of our admin girl. So mm. watch that space. We'll be posting that in the next few weeks. Um, and we are going to mm. be launching some merchandise. We are very excited. We've been working on some amazing projects and – We've got lots and lots of fun things in the pipeline for you guys. So watch yeah. this space. Well, anyway, I guess that wraps up this season. That sounds so – I don't want to it wrap up the season. No, I'm not ready to wrap up. I think we're definitely going to do – because we've been getting heaps of questions. So I think we're going to do a, Q, a, a bit, bit of a Q&A, Q&A episode, like a bonus episode for you guys in the hol- in the holiday season. Sounds very American. <laughs> we love everyone and cannot thank you enough for listening to – 12 more episodes of darling shine this season it's been it's been full on yes but we fucking love it we absolutely we fucking love it sis (laughs) all right bye guys thank you bye have a good christian years